Thor, so we'll try to keep this um, relatively short, and I will keep this to about, we'll keep it to about 10 minutes, so if you're listening to the podcast right now, come back at about 40 minutes, uh, about 40 minutes we'll be, we'll be, minutes, a long time. we'll be wrapping this thing up, so about 40 minutes, come back, check in, and uh, we should be done with our, our Thor Ragnarok spoilers. Uh, so well, no spoilers. No, yeah, no, we're gonna spoil like all the way. Is it's it, fine. Is it okay? No, yeah, you don't want to hear it. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a comic book here. You don't want him to, to spoil it. It's not a big deal. We It'll should, be okay. We should. Get I into can't this. imagine these spoilers are gonna like blow my mind. <laughs> Do you guys want to step out? You can step out of the room if you want for it's ten okay. minutes. If if it's that's cool, okay. I think we should spoil it a little bit because there's a lot I want to break down all right. about it. Um, so again, spoiler warning for Thor Ragnarok. Um, but to be honest, I'm thinking about it, and I, I don't know what I could say that's a real spoiler here. Like, is there's no, like, big reveal or, like, big anything that happens in this movie. It's really just, like, a fun roller coaster ride. Like, the best way that, the best compliment I can give this movie is that it feels like you're on a, a Disney ride the entire time. Like, it almost feels like you're moving through a Disney ride. And there's even one section where it feels like Thor is on a Disney ride. <laughs> like, when he's he first gets to the world of yeah. the Grand Master and stuff, and they're, like, showing the backstory and blah, blah, blah. Um, overall, I would say this movie was very okay. Um, very okay. Uh, I, I was a little let down because I expected it to be a little funnier than it was. It wasn't as funny. No, like, I, I felt like... It's not like, that it was, fu- like, it, they tried to be funny and they blew it. Yeah. It was just not as funny as I, I was expecting a buddy comedy, which I wasn't happy about that idea, but it wasn't as funny as like Guardians of the Galaxy. And when you take away that from this type of film, you're like, wait, it, I kind of needed to be more funny. Yeah, and, and the jokes that they tried to make, I don't know about your theater, but the jokes that they tried to make, no one laughed. Yeah. Like, it was really awkward. Like, it felt like a stand-up comedian, like, failing on stage. Like, they would make these, like, sort of side comments or, like, you know, the classic Thor jokes. You brought this up last time. Mm-hmm. The classic Thor jokes, he's, like, stranger in a strange world. Always, like, that's his shtick. And they went back to that a few times, and it was kind of like, oh, okay, like that wasn't funny. I can't think of any like examples off well, the top of my the head. The best, the funniest part were his the new sidekicks or the new the rock. Oh, those guys are great. The rock guy and Meeks. I don't remember the rock guy's name. He's they're actually in the comic book, so it's a good Easter egg. Those guys were funny. The guy that did the voice actor, I don't know who that is, but he was fantastic as it. Um, but they were absolutely hilarious and not overly hilarious. That was like a Jar Jar Binks that you were annoyed by them caricature yeah. kind of thing. Um, I had a question about the rock dude. He said that he was a Cronin, I think. I, I, I think that's what Thor referred to him as. He's like, oh, you're a Cronin. Is that the thing? Is that a? Is that like a slow, like, sort of, is that like a call out to the thing because he's made of rock and Marvel? No, because the, the, thing, the thing's a human. Yeah. So that he is okay. not human. So okay. he is in the comic books from Planet Hawk. Um, so they threw it in as, like, kind of an Easter egg kind of thing. Got it. Um, they, were, they were pretty funny. Um, I would say, yeah, it's not as funny as I expected. It still was funny. Um, the action was was pretty good. I would say, was it an amazing movie? No. Uh, was I entertained? 100%. Yeah. Yeah, I left that movie theater like, oh, that was fun. You know, yeah. that was pretty much my thought. I would give it a 3 out of 5 if I were to score it or a 5 out of 10, yeah. which isn't bad. Um, and uh, I guess the, there's uh, – you could not watch this movie and not be lost – in the overall Marvel Avengers saga, I guess uh, there's probably two aspects to the thing that you would need to know by the end of it that would matter transferring over. But other than that, you could you could miss this whole movie. Let's let's talk about that a little bit. I want to I want to dive into like where this fits in the Marvel the MCU. Um, so I thought it was a really like one of the the coolest things that has happened as a result of the Marvel Cinematic Universe is that like all of these like unsuspecting people have become comic book fans and not even realized it, Mm -hmm. right? Like, you like going to these movies because it's a superhero action movie or something, and you're like, oh, they're fun, and they're summer blockbusters and popcorn munching, good times. But, like, all of a sudden, you are into the world of um, comic book um, logic, where, like, your character that's in one movie crosses over quickly with another character in a different movie in a really cool way. Like, so in this one, Doctor Strange is part of it and you're like all of a sudden you're like oh shit Doctor Strange is in this and you're like oh yeah man like I would not have expected to see like those two people like cross over in the way that they did and like so to me like that was really neat and it's quick and it's like not a super important scene like it's just sort of this like side piece scene 
and you're like, man, that's really neat. And like, that's what makes comics so great is that you're reading a Batman comic, and every time Superman shows up, like the hair on the back of your neck stands up, and you're like, oh, this is so awesome. I forgot they like inhabit the same world. Like, if you're not reading the Superman books and whatever, all of a sudden you realize they inhabit the same yeah. place. The that's, other thing you need to know uh, that isn't obvious is this takes on the exact same time as Guardians of the Galaxy two. Because if you remember at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy two, they're float, they're flying, and Thor is floating in space and smashes in the front of the wind, windshield of their spaceship. <laughs> so something happens in this movie at some point that causes Thor to smash into the front of that And thing. see, that's what I love about Marvel, because they're doing it right. Oh, shit! <laughs> Did that blow your mind? Yeah. yeah. I haven't seen it, so I don't know, but that's, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, and I think, like I said, that's what I love about Marvel, because they're doing it right. They are bringing the cinematic universe together. Where DC is kind of failing, I feel like. Yeah. And, part and DC's it, trying so hard, but they're just not... They don't. They haven't found their thumbprint, thumbprint or their tone or whatever it is that they want for their for their movies. And I want to get into that today. I want to actually talk about... Uh, that, that's part of my topic mm-hmm. later. I want to get into that a little bit. Um, but, like, A, fuck, wow, yeah, of course. <laughs> like, yeah, that's so crazy. I didn't even so put that after together. after credit scene, kind yeah. of something happened, so... Oh. Um, but yeah, that that I mean, there's that aspect that you have to know what happens in the after credits is very smart. Um, what happens, what Loki does at the very end that you assume he does at the very end is very important. So Loki, uh, I want to talk about like I thought his character was great, and uh, always my favorite part of every Thor movie is Loki. Um, I really like the relationship between the two of them. I thought they did well. Um, Loki was a badass in this movie. Like I thought he was really cool. Um, He wasn't so much of, like, the flip-flopper of good and bad as we've seen him in other movies. Like, he's pretty one-note throughout this one, which, you know, isn't necessarily a bad thing. Because this movie got crowded. I think this movie got really crowded by the end of it, like, the different characters they were introducing. I think that the Grand Master, Jeff Goldblum's character, was really built up a lot in the previews, but maybe not necessarily delivered on as much. Oh, I thought he did fine. Oh, he did great. Oh, he was great. It's Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, Jeff Goldblum's great. great. Um... But I would have liked to have seen more of him. Like, it, you know, they did a good job. They essentially had two separate stories going on the entire movie, right? Um, they had, like, the threat of um, Asgard. Asgard, and then they had, like... Planet Hulk. Yeah, Thor's... Two separate ones. Yeah, Thor's, like, um, desolation on yeah. Planet Hulk or whatever it was. Um, and so, like, they did a really good job, I think, of marrying those two stories. Um so, so like, yeah, I guess, like, overall, when I really think about it, it was a good movie, but it was just good. Like, to your yeah, point, I would just give it, good. I probably am, like, a 6.5 out of 10, mm-hmm. 7, which I know people are like, well, you're like, that's bad. Like, no, that's that's a good, like, I would suggest people go yeah, see Yeah, I would this. recommend it. I think out of the three Thor movies, and I don't even care about Thor. I really don't. I mean, out of all the Avengers, he's my least interested one, yeah. in my opinion. Um, I think it's it barely beat the Dark Elves second one, but I think out of the three Thor movies, it is the best of the three. My one complaint was at the end of the second Thor, Loki takes over the throne by pretending to be Odin, and that is wrapped up like that. That was such a big deal at the end of the second one, and then this one's like, oh, oh you're just, just eating grapes, watching plays. Okay, yeah, you're done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was literally just like, I, I, yeah, you're you're low. Yeah, I know this is going on. You most, know what I mean? Most badass part of the movie though. That last scene on the bridge was awesome. Like, that was a good scene, in yeah. terms of, like a fight scene, like to me, like that was as much of like a geek payoff as that Darth Vader scene at the end of Rogue One, where it's just like, oh wow, that was well, that awesome. was that was better because that was the first time you saw Darth Vader do something cool. Yeah, that's let's true. let's be that's honest. True. I mean, we love Darth Vader because of the way he cool, the way he sounds, and the way he looks, but he's never done anything cool up until Rogue <laughs> One, and it took thirty. Yeah, years for that years. to happen yeah. Yeah. and you just pooped your pants when you saw it i was like i've never seen him do something cool he did something cool finally so yeah so i would say i would say that last scene is so worth it um you see like the hulk like hulking out you've got um thor on the bridge that new <coughs> that new chick i don't know her name i can't remember the valkyrie her. the valkyrie yep mm-hmm. um so yeah overall really fun movie um but not as funny as I think people might expect it to be. Um, and, yeah, yeah, I would suggest go, go see it. it. Yep, go see it's it. definitely worth it. So, yeah, we did that almost really perfectly. We're about 30 seconds yeah. away from What's your 40, topic? So, uh, yeah, let's talk, about, let's talk about my topic. Um, I had two that I wanted to go over today. So I'll save one because Gus brought it up. 
the DC Cinematic Universe is something we talk about pretty often here on the show. But we are literally at the precipice now. We are a week away from Justice League coming out. And I'm a huge DC fan. I'm a huge DC fan. Me too. And it's like, here we are. How do they save it? Like, not even how do they save this, but like, why aren't I more excited for the Justice League? Like, I should be. Like, this is everything I've ever wanted out of a movie. And like, Batman vs Superman. What I had like Google alerts set up that any time a new piece of news came out, I got an email about Batman vs Superman. But this time around, like. I even like Batman vs. Superman. I actually thought it was a pretty good movie. Wonder Woman was great. Suicide Squad fucking sucked. But, yeah. like, for some reason, it feels like all the momentum for this movie has been shit on. So, like... It's because you're worried. I am I'm worried. This is, well, you're right. You're that's why I'm not excited it? about it, because I know I'm going to probably like it. I might not love Critics it, are sharp it in their but minds. I know I'm going to have to freaking defend myself for the next yep. eight months yeah. for the, or the rest of my life. I'm going to yep. have to defend myself like I did Batman versus Superman. I had to defend myself so much to people who hadn't even seen the movie. I know. <laughs> they didn't even see the movie, and they're arguing with me. Uh, like, are you serious? Yep. Yeah. That blew my mind. I was like, go see the movie before you say something and go in with an open mind. Because I know going to see the movie isn't going to change your mind. You're still going to come out hating it because you already yeah. made up your mind. But if you can go in there with an open mind and be willing to come back to me and say, you know what? I actually was entertained. There was things I didn't like about it, but I was entertained. Or come back and give me reasons why you didn't like yeah, it. Yeah, why you didn't like it. Yeah. You. Yeah. Not at what people told you to look for, but why you didn't like it. Yeah, and so I, I'm already aware that that's going to be what Justice League is going to come like that's maybe not. why because like i think people expected to not like wonder woman but you know but it came out to great reviews and it was a great movie you know the the fantastic. second trailer i think they're focusing on aquaman a lot because they already know wonder woman's woman she's solid in it they're mm-hmm. pretty confident that we're gonna love wonder Woman, regardless of whether she's any good or not because we love the other movie that she's gonna be center of it and she's gonna do fantastic so the second trailer had a lot of aquaman yeah and they really, I think, had to do a lot of work to make Aquaman be badass. And I think they actually got it down. Because I really think he looks cool. And maybe that's why, though, because we haven't seen their backstories. It's all these characters coming in at once. I mean, we've, we've seen Batman vs. Superman and we've seen the Wonder Woman now. But you've got this Justice League going on and you don't see the backstory for the Flash. Or you don't see the backstory for Aquaman. And maybe that's why you've got this reservation. Yeah, I mean... I don't know. I, I'm a huge DC fan. I, lo- I love DC. I've always been... I mean, I've got a Batman tattoo. I've been oh, a DC, awesome. DC fan you my entire life. you got a Batman 89 life. tattoo. Yeah, I've been a DC fan forever. That's awesome. Um, I just... I feel... I, I get disappointed time and time after. I feel like, um, you know, I, I want to defend it as well. And um, I think they're great movies, but I think Marvel is... And so far ahead. Their, their, they got their game together, and they know what they're doing. They have it organized. I think that's the problem. They're organized. Yeah, I don't know why DC felt so rushed. I don't know why they felt they're like... They're trying to copy Marvel. I think that's the thing, is that they saw what Marvel was doing, and they're like, we need to do the same thing. But we don't why, have the 30... They, we don't have the 10 years like they already have they, taken. They had already started. I mean, it was, it's the, too late. Did you know the first movie? Or maybe not the first one. I'm pretty sure it's the first one that, because I know they made a lot of... Is actually the Edward Norton's Hulk. Did you know that's actually part of the, the Marvel yes, saga? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, yep, yep. And yep. that's technically, I think, the first episode. It was Iron Man and then that. Oh, well, yeah, Iron Man, I it, guess, yeah. was the first one. But, um, so, here, here's the thing, like, because I do like Batman vs. Superman, I do like um, Wonder Woman, obviously, but, like, Batman vs. Superman, I will admit, did try to, to cram too much into one movie that didn't need to have all of that. Like, as much as Wonder Woman was a great part of that, you didn't need to have Wonder Woman in that movie. And, you know, you could have spent a little bit more time exploring, like, who this Batman is and, you know, how he fits into Because Man of Steel had a great origin, a great movie for Superman. I, mean, oh, yeah. I loved Man of Steel. I thought it was I great. Too. Um, but, like... Why not give The Flash that treatment? And I'm not saying an origin story. You don't have to do an origin story, but give him his own movie. Give, like, try Green Lantern again. Even Cyborg, if those other movies are successful, you can do that before you do Justice League. I forgot about Green Lantern. Because, like, <laughs> because here's the thing. like, What DC has that Marvel doesn't is, well, maybe this isn't true anymore, but at least at some point in time, DC superheroes were more household names than Marvel superheroes. Oh, yeah. Like, let's not forget that nobody gave a shit about Iron Man before Robert Downey Jr. came out and played Iron Man. Like, he wasn't an important character. He didn't matter. But 
Robert Downey Jr. owned the role and created something really special with it, and thus came everything else. Like, the people didn't really, like, comic book nerds knew who the Avengers were, but more people knew who the fucking Justice League were than the Avengers, right? Like, you know Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Flash, Green Lantern, like, these names, Aquaman, these are names that, like, roll off the tongue if you say superheroes. You know, I don't think a lot of people go directly to Black Panther and Doctor Strange, (laughs) you know what I mean? Um, So I, I think part of DC's downfall is that they feel like super desperate to to fans, and so yeah. 